Hey, this is Nicholas. Let's talk about the hand tie-in lung channel. Now, when we start talking about the lung channel, or any channel for that matter, we want to start by discussing the normal functions and characteristics of the channel. Because once we know how a healthy, balanced lung channel is supposed to function, that will give us some insight into what happens when things go wrong. And it will also give us some insight into what the points on this channel can do, and when it's appropriate to choose those points for treatment. So let's start with Chapter 8 of the Su Wen. This is the chapter of the Neijing where every organ is assigned a government office. This is where we say the heart is the emperor or the liver is the general. Well here it says that the lung holds the office of prime minister and is the issuer of management and regulation. So what does this mean? Well first, when we say the lung is the prime minister, we mean that the lung is the prime minister to the heart. So the heart is the emperor and reigns over everything, but the lung is the one taking care of the day-to-day -day details. So this tells us that there's a strong relationship between the heart and the lung in terms of the governing of the body's functions, and that's why they both sit right next to each other in the chest, sharing a residence in the upper jowl. Second, we say that the lung is the issuer of management and regulation. So what does it manage and regulate? Well, the lung manages and regulates the flow of qi and blood. This is a little bit strange, because normally we think of the heart moving the blood, or the liver governing free coursing through the vessels. But here we're saying that this management and regulation begins with the lung. Think of a qigong practitioner. Qigong is essentially a set of breathing exercises. So by controlling the breath, the qigong practitioner can control the flow of qi and guide the qi to specific parts of the body. So this is an example of the lung regulating the flow of qi. Or, as another example, suppose a person is nervous or anxious. Their heart is pounding in their chest, their face turns red, and they start sweating. Well, this person can focus on their breath and regulate their breathing in order to calm themselves down, essentially using their lung to calm their heart shen. Breathe. Just breathe. So when we start looking at point functions and indications, we'll see examples of this relationship between the lung and the heart. Points on the lung channel can treat certain conditions such as heart pain, fullness in the chest, palpitation, mania and laughter, or an irregular pulse. So when we get into the actual functions of the lung, the first one we see is that the lung governs qi and controls respiration. The lung is a source of postnatal qi. It's where we get the da qi, the qi of the air. And then the lung manages and regulates the flow of that qi throughout the body. Next, we look at the direction of the lung. On the one hand, the lung diffuses upward and outward, spreading qi to the surface and supplying qi up to the head and face. On the other hand, it has a strong downward action. Unlike the spleen that raises the clear, the lung is downbearing the clear qi that we breathe in, hence the Weissman term, depurative downbearing. When the lung fails in its function of depurative downbearing, the qi rebels upwards, giving us symptoms like cough, wheezing, asthma, and shortness of breath. So these are situations where we would choose the lung channel for treatment. Next, the lung regulates the water passages. Remember, the kidney steams the fluid upwards, and the lung percolates the fluids back down. When the lung fails to do its job, this water can stagnate. One possibility is phlegm formation, especially if the stagnant water combines with heat or cold. Another possibility is water retention, or edema, especially edema in the face or sudden swelling of the limbs. Or we can get urination problems, like frequent urination or bedwetting. So when you start looking at the functions of the points, we'll see that points on the lung channel can treat these conditions by restoring the lung's ability to regulate the water passages. Next, we say that the lung is responsible for the skin and the body hair. So if the lung is deficient, we may see a dry, dull, pale complexion. But what's especially useful is, when we say the lung governs the skin, we also mean it controls the opening and closing of the pores. So we can use points on the lung channel to regulate sweating and release the exterior in the case of an external attack. Next, each of the organs opens to an orifice. So just like the kidney goes to the ears or the heart sprouts in the tongue, the lung opens to the nose. So in our point functions, we're going to see that certain points along the channel are good for nasal congestion and sinus problems. Just a few other characteristics, we say the lung faces the hundred vessels. This again has to do with the lung's position as prime minister to the heart and its role of managing the flow of qi and blood. This is useful to us because we take the pulse at the wrist along the lung channel. 
It also lets us treat certain conditions of the pulse, like weak pulse or irregular pulse. We also say the lung is the delicate organ. Basically, whenever there's an attack, the lung is the first to be affected. So we might say certain things like the spleen is averse to cold or the stomach is averse to heat. Well, the lung is averse to everything. Heat, cold, dampness, dryness, and wind. And then, just because the lung governs the exterior, it's going to be the first to get hit by any external pathogen. In terms of the five shen, the lung houses the puo, or corporeal soul. This has to do with our sense of physicality. It gives us the ability to move and experience physical sensation. And when a person's corporeal soul is strong and healthy, that person will have an optimistic outlook. But if the puo is not healthy, that person will be susceptible to pessimism, sorrow, sadness, and grief. So clinically what this means is we can use the lung to treat certain emotional conditions like sorrow, sadness, and grief. So those are the functions of the lung, and understanding those functions will help us understand the functions of the points along this channel. Next, we can take a look at the actual pathways of the channel to get even more insight into what these points can do. So here's the primary channel, and here are a few things we want to pay attention to. Number one, the lung channel starts with its internal pathway in the middle jowl. So if you ever get the question, where does the lung channel begin, please do not say lung 1. The lung channel starts in the middle jowl. Second, we know that every channel connects to its own organ and its yin-yang pair by way of its internal pathway. So here we see the channel connecting to the lung and the large intestine. But what we want to pay attention to is if the channel connects to any additional organs. So here we see the lung channel traveling through the stomach organ. This lets us know that we can select points along the lung channel to treat certain stomach conditions like nausea, vomiting, and acid reflux. Next, we see the channel making this nice diamond shape across the chest. So when we get to the point functions, we're going to see points that can treat things like fullness in the chest or heart pain, because this is where the channel pathway travels. And the really important one, the lung channel ascends to the throat. So the lung channel is going to be very important in treating things like sore throat, a red swollen throat, or congestion of the throat. After that, the channel emerges and its external pathway goes down the radial side of the arm to the thumb, so we're able to treat conditions all along the pathway of the channel. And finally, we want to pay attention to this branch from lung 7 to the index finger. This is the path that chi takes to get to the next channel in the sequence of flow. So in the order of the flow, lung to large intestine, to stomach, to spleen, and so on, this is how the chi gets from the lung channel to the large intestine channel through this branch. So here we have an overview of the pathologies of the lung, and all of these should make sense. Cough, wheezing, and asthma, because the lung controls respiration and has a descending action. Congested and sore throat, because the channel ascends to the throat. Fullness in the chest, because the channel makes that diamond pattern across the chest, and also because the lung is in the chest. And then just pain along the channel. Next is the low channel. Remember, low channels always start at their low connecting point, in this case, lung 7. Then it spreads over the thenar eminence and connects to its yin-yang pair, the large intestine channel. So with the low connecting channel, we can treat pain along the course of the channel, in this case, thenar eminence pain. And we can also treat conditions of its yin-yang pair. So in this case, we can treat nasal congestion. Now, as we saw, the lung channel doesn't travel up to the nose. It stops at the throat and then comes back down. But the reason we can treat nasal congestion is because the large intestine channel does go to the nose. So we're able to treat it at this point because it's the yin-yang pair. Next, we have the divergent channel. Remember the things we said about the divergent channels. They strengthen the connection between yin and yang paired organs. So here we see the divergent channel connecting to the lung and the large intestine. Number two, they supply qi to the head and face. So again, we see the lung divergent channel going up to the throat letting us treat things like sore throat. And three, divergent channels reconnect to their yang-paired primary channel. So the lung channel connects to the large intestine channel, which again can help us treat nose problems because that's where the large intestine channel goes. Here's a summary, and as we can see, we have nasal congestion and throat problems. So those are things that can be treated by points along the lung channel. Next, we have the sinew channel. Remember we said that the sinew channels do not connect to the organs, so that's why we don't see any organs in this picture. The sinew channel generally follows the primary channel, so we can treat pain in the muscles and joints along its pathway. 
What's interesting to point out is the lung sinew channel spreads over the ribs and lateral costal region. So when we start looking at the points, we'll see that some of them are indicated for pain in the lateral costal region. We can treat that because of the pathway of the sinew channel. So that's it for the channels. Again, the reason we spend so much time looking at these is because understanding the pathways of the channel will help us make sense of why the points do the things that they do. So in order to understand the functions of the points, we're always going to relate it back to three things. The normal physiology or functions of the channel, the pathways of the channel, or the category to which the point belongs. There are 361 points on the 14 channels, and if you try to memorize the function of each point, you're going to have a hard time. So instead, try to understand the organ, the channel pathways, and the point category in order to understand the functions of the points. Lung 1 is Zhong Fu, middle palace. The name of this point is reminding us that the lung channel starts in the middle jiao, and that this point can be used to treat middle jiao problems. It's also a front mu point. According to the classics, front mu points are used to treat yang conditions, that is, acute conditions, excess conditions, and heat. In modern practice, though, we really just use them for any condition of the organ, because that's where the qi of the organ accumulates. So here, lung 1 descends lung qi, activating the downbearing function of the lung, treating symptoms of rebellious qi, like cough, wheezing, and asthma. It clears heat, treating heat in the chest. Remember with the internal pathway, we had that diamond-shaped pattern across the chest? It transforms phlegm to treat throat problems, and it's able to do that because the channel ascends to the throat. It treats nasal congestion because the lung opens to the nose, and it regulates water passages to treat things like edema in the face. And finally, it descends stomach qi to treat nausea and vomiting because, like we said, this channel passes through the stomach organ. Lung 2 is honestly not that interesting. It descends lung qi, but most points on the lung channel do that. It's on the shoulder, so it treats shoulder pain, if anything stands out, we could say it's that it opens the chest and treats irregular pulse, highlighting that connection between the lung and the heart. Lung 3 is a window of heaven point. This one is a bit special because most window of heaven points are located on the neck, while lung 3 is located on the arm. But the lung channel goes to the throat, so it makes sense that this could be a window of heaven point. Remember, these are the functions of window of heaven points, and all of them are represented here. Window of heaven points treat neck problems, and here we see lung 3 treating throat pain and goiter. Window of heaven points harmonize the flow of qi between the head and the body, treating rebellious qi, and we see that here with cough and hemoptysis. Window of heaven points treat disorders of the sense organs, and here lung 3 treats dizziness and vision problems, and window of heaven points treat psycho-emotional disorders, and here we see that with the function of calming the corporeal soul, treating things like sadness, grief, and other shen problems. Lung 4 is another one that's just not super interesting. If a point doesn't have a category, it doesn't always do a whole lot. It's on the arm, so it treats arm pain. Again, if anything stands out, it's this ability to open the chest. Lung 5, on the other hand, is a very important point. Chi zi means cubit marsh. It gets its name because it's located on the cubital crease, and you can think of it as a marsh because it's swampy. It's located in the pit of the elbow, where it tends to get hot and damp and sweaty, like a marsh. So this point is especially good at clearing heat and regulating water. So it clears heat, both excess heat and deficient heat. This can manifest as fever, dry mouth, or even certain bleeding conditions. If the heat goes into the chest, we can get chest pain and shen problems. Then, Hmong 5 also regulates the water passages, treating things like edema, swelling of the limbs, and urination problems. Also, lung 5 is a he si point. Remember, he si points treat rebellious qi and diarrhea, and we see both of those here with cough, vomiting, and diarrhea. And finally, lung 5 is located on the elbow, so it's good for elbow pain, or pain anywhere along the course of the channel. Lung 6 is the she cleft point, and remember, she cleft points treat acute conditions and pain. So we see that here with things like throat pain, loss of voice, and pain along the channel. She cleft points on yin channels have an additional function of treating blood disorders. So here we see lung 6 clears heat to stop bleeding, treating hemoptysis, coughing up blood, and hematemesis, vomiting blood. Lung 7. The name of lung 7 is lie chue, meaning 
broken sequence. This is referring to its location and the fact that it's off the line, closer to the large intestine channel. This is a very important point, so let's look at the functions one by one. The lung governs the exterior and regulates the opening and closing of the pores. So here, lung 7 is one of our best points for releasing the exterior in case of an external attack, either wind heat or wind cold. Lung 7 not only treats external wind, but internal wind as well. In fact, this is why Ma Yang named it as one of his heavenly star points, because of its ability to treat things like headache, lockjaw, and wind obstruction in the upper body for things like Bell's palsy and facial paralysis. It's also the Gao Wu command point for the head and nape because it treats headache and neck disorders. Lung 7 is also the master point of the Ren channel. The Ren channel, or conception vessel, is one of the eight extraordinary meridians. It runs up the anterior midline and it connects to the uterus and the genitals. So that's why we see Lung 7 treating conditions like uterine problems and genital problems. Lung 7 is also the Luo connecting point, giving this point some very important features. Remember the functions of the low connecting points. Number one, they treat disorders of the yin-yang paired channel. So here we see lung seven treating nasal congestion. Remember, the lung channel itself doesn't go to the nose, it only goes as high as the throat. But its yin-yang pair, the large intestine channel, does go to the nose. So that's why lung seven, the low point, is able to treat nasal congestion. Next, low connecting points treat disorders along the low connecting channel. So here we see pain in the wrist, thenar eminence, and thumb. That's the pathway of the low connecting channel that we talked about in the beginning. Low connecting points also treat psychoemotional disorders. So here we see poor memory, palpitations, and laughter. Again, highlighting the connection between the lung and the heart. Lung 8 is Jing Chu, channel gutter. Honestly, this is not a commonly used point. It's the Jing River point, and you would think that this would be a big deal because Jing River points treat cough, shortness of breath, and fever and chills. But honestly, this point just isn't used very much in modern practice. If we want to release the exterior, most people would go to Lung 7. Lung 9 is the Yuan source point. On yin channels, Yuan source points tonify the organ. So Lung 9 tonifies the lung, both Lung Qi and Lung Yin. It's a shoe stream point, so it treats joint pain. And then, it's also one of the eight gathering points, or eight Hui meeting points. It's the meeting point of the vessels. And this makes sense, because this is where we take the pulse during pulse diagnosis. So lung 9 can also treat certain heart conditions or conditions of the pulse due to stagnation. Lung 10 is the ying spring and fire point. So this point is especially good for clearing heat, and it's a very important point for benefiting the throat. Again, the lung channel ascends to the throat, so by clearing heat, we can treat sore throat, dry throat, or loss of voice. It also treats bleeding disorders due to heat, like coughing up blood or vomiting blood. And the lung channel connects to the stomach, so this point can also harmonize the stomach by clearing heat. And the lung is the prime minister to the heart, so when there's heat in the lung, this heat tends to get transmitted to the heart and cause agitation and shen problems. So clearing heat from the lung can clear heat from the heart to calm shen. Lung 11 is the Jing Well point. The well points are superficial and have a quick effect, so this point is able to restore consciousness. Well points clear heat and treat the upper end of the channel, so Lung 11 can treat acute disorders of the throat due to severe heat or fire toxicity. This point usually pricked a bleed, so I would only use it for severe throat problems due to extreme heat. For anything else, I would prefer to go to Lung 10 to benefit the throat. Also, Lung 11 is a Sun Sumiao ghost point, so it's used to treat mania and epilepsy. This is probably due to the fact that this point can strongly clear heat, and also because the lung has such a close relationship to the heart, so it's able to quickly calm severe Shen problems. So that's it for the lung channel. I hope it wasn't too complicated. Just remember to focus on the channel pathways and point categories, and see if you can understand the point functions in terms of those two things. So I hope you enjoyed it, because that's all for today. Thanks, and see you next time.